Okay, what we'd like to do in this video is come up with a consistent model for the sky so we can explain several things that we see when we look up at the sky, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But just as a quick recap, in some of the previous videos, what we were looking at was some extreme motion of the sky depending on your location. So here's an example where the person is at the very North Pole, top of the world, looking at these stars here. And if you're at the North Pole, sort of rotating on the Earth, you'd literally be spinning like a ballerina here around the North Pole of the Earth, and you'd just see stars going by you from left to right or right to left, depending on how you were looking at the sky. And that's sort of some extreme motion. And we looked at other ones when you were at the equator where the stars would be going straight in and out of the ground. And that was, that was some examples of what the sky looks like from some extreme vantage points on the Earth. What we'd like to do now is introduce something called the celestial sphere which is a very successful model of the sky, although it's not realistic, but it's a good model of the sky. And it has a few rules associated with it that I'll tell you about now. Here are the rules. The first rule is that when you're wondering about where the sky is, number one here, is when you ask the question sort of like, where are the stars? Again, or planets or anything in the sky. Your only answer that you're concerned with on here is that they're very far away. That's the only thing you would concern yourself with. So in other words, no one in this model of the sky that we want to come up with here is going to be concerned with some actual distance, like is a star something like 4.77 light years away or anything like that. We're just not going to worry about specific distances. And if you think about it, if you go outside and look at the sky, neither do you. We discussed even earlier how the Big Dipper, which we're so used to going to look for now, looks flat to us here, the way I'm sort of outlining with the mouse cursor here, but as we discussed, all of these stars are a different number of light years away, like even the sacred pointer stars that we use to find the North Star, Merak and Doobie here, are a different number of light years away, 78 light years away and 105 light years away, but we don't worry about that when we go out and use the Big Dipper or observe the sky, and you don't need to worry about it if you're just trying to get yourself familiar with the night sky. It's good enough for you just to say to yourself quietly that whatever star we're going to worry about is just very far away. That's it. Okay, We can use the Big Dipper just for that fact alone. The second rule of the celestial sphere is that, I guess it's related to the first here, but the actual distances here, like the actual numbers, we're just going to sort of call that, who cares? Just not going to worry about those actual star distances. In fact, it makes things kind of boring, doesn't it? And sort of on the third rule here, the third rule is sort of like an example here. We'll say then that the Big Dipper, well, that looks plainer to us, but we know it's not. So that's just one of the rules. And so you don't have to go just by the Big Dipper but all constellations or asterisms, no matter what you'd be looking at, would be planar like that. Not worry about where the stars are. And the fourth thing about this, the rules here, is the celestial sphere that I'm going to tell you about is just a model. In other words, by model means, in this case here, it's not physically correct. And we will show you some glaring examples of how it's not correct, but it does such a good job in describing some things we see in the night sky, so it's very nice for us to use. Okay, so then continuing then, why don't we come out with a definition then of the celestial sphere? So I'll just abbreviate it, celestial sphere, and here is the definition of the celestial sphere. And one more time, what is the celestial sphere? It's going to be a model here a model for the sky that's going to illustrate several very nice things about how the, how the sky works in a very sort of intuitive way. And so the definition of it is going to be this here. All stars, planets, sun, moon, in other words, anything that you would see up there are printed on the inside of a round blanket, inside of a round, 
and a round blanket that covers the earth. And rotates around it. And lastly, in the model, the Earth does not rotate. And so that's the model. Let's just read through it one more time. The definition of the celestial sphere is that all stars, planets, sun, moon, in other words, anything you can think of in the sky that you'd be concerned with its motion, think of them as being printed on the inside of a large round blanket that covers the earth and rotates around it. And in the model, the earth does not rotate. In the next video, we'll pick up this definition and look at it a little more.